One thing that's really been annoying me about this car and the build is, in particular is the exhaust manifold. The turbo exhaust manifold is an SPA genuine manifold, long, long style manifold. Uh, I originally had a sort of a Chinese copy that cracked um, quite quickly after about 2,000 miles. So I went out and I bought the same style manifold, but a genuine SPA one. And guess what? It cracked in the same place again. So I've already been through one of these manifolds. So the SPA one cost me five times as much as the Chinese copy one did and cracked in exactly the same place. So, so I got the manifold off, I sent it away to, have, to be welded. I got that back now, I fitted it and then realized that again, the manifold had warped. So this manifold in particular, the SPA one, it, when I fitted it, it warped. When I, um, it cracked, I got it repaired and it's warped. So it's now warped twice. Uh, the first time it warped, I had it skimmed. So I need to take it off yet again, take it to the machine shop to get it skimmed because it's blowing on both of the corners. So it's kind of bent like a banana and the two corners are blowing. So just a word of warning guys with these SPA manifolds. I don't know what the other cast ones are like, but particularly the SPA ones, my experience is they bow, they crack, they shit. Don't bother with them guys. Just spend a bit more money, get something else. I don't know, I can't recommend a particular type one, but I know the one that BST uses, uh, which has the Lambda sensors already cast into it. I've heard good things about it. I haven't tried it myself, so I can't 100% say, but that looks to be a better product than uh, the this SPA one. So I'm just gonna get cracking. I've taken this manifold off probably six, seven times now. I know what I'm doing it. It's gonna take me sort of half an hour, uh, but it's just a pain in the ass to, to do it every time it cracks, warps or, or whatever. So let's get it done. Let's get it to the machine shop and get back on the road. I'm cracking on with the removal of the manifold now. Here I'm removing the external wastegate from the manifold. I just need to undo the clamps that hold the, down pipe, the dump pipe from the wastegate to the exhaust and then I could finally free up the clamps, which I'm having trouble here, as you can see, from the manifold, and then I could pull the wastegate away. Now the wastegate's out of the way, I can go ahead and I can remove the boost pipe that goes over the top, the one that's wrapped in gold, and that will give me much better access to get to the bolts with the turbo and the manifold. So I just need to take care of the lambda sensor on this side, as it's stopping me pulling the gold boost pipe out of the way. And now I can start undoing the 15 mil bolts from the turbo that attaches it to the exhaust manifold. I would just get that turbo pushed back slightly so it gives me room to get that manifold out. And also gives me room to put my arm down behind where the manifold is. So some of you guys will comment that my lambda sensors are in an unusual place. Uh, sort of in the manifold and they you know I've had various comments about the lambda's burning up etc and maybe not reading the air fuel correctly. Uh, this is how my tuning company wanted it done, this is how they tune their cars, they have loads and loads of cars, they've got 20 years worth of experience tuning these uh, VR6 engines. And also you see OE cars that have uh, the O2 sensors or Lambda sensors in their exhaust manifolds and they don't have any issues either so I've had this car on the road for 7,000 miles, no issues at all with regards to fuel or where the placement is of those Lambda sensors so it's working for now, if we change the exhaust manifold we will revisit the location of those sensors and to see whether they're still needed in the manifold or whether we can put them in the downpipe. Right, really sorry about that guys, but the bloody, my camera storage ran out, so I've got it off now. Basically, um, we had to take the boost pipe that ran over the top, the wastegate and dump off, and the down pipe just unclipped from the turbo there. So there's the turbo, not seen her in a while. And uh, here is the manifold. So you can see dark splodges here. And uh, this is the, it's actually a new gasket I put on about two weeks ago. But you can see it's been blown past the gasket. The center has been sealing fine. As you can see, there's no blackness. But on the two edges, you can see the blackness. That's where it's been blowing. Because the manifold is sort of, bent like a banana so that side's out and that side's out and it's kind of bent like a banana uh, see if we can see any better picture on here so yeah you can see the black there and the uh, black there on the corner so that's where it's been blowing both sides so we'll get that 
skimmed flat and then hopefully it shouldn't have any more cracking issues and also shouldn't have any more warping because this is the second time this baby's been, been machined flat. So this is something to also be aware of if, if anyone's supplying you a kit and they have this or any kind of cast manifold uh, and they're doing the job for you, then I would 100% recommend you ask them what their sort of warranty is uh, with these manifolds. You know, if they crack, like who, who pays for that? Or, or if they warp, who pays for that? Do you pay for the part and, and labor or you know what? So definitely if you get someone to build you one of these cars, think about, uh, and you're gonna use a log mountain fold like this, think about whose responsibility is it to fix it if it warps and if it cracks. Because in my cases, I've had two of these crack and this is warped twice, the same one. So, so if I had to get a garage to do this, it's probably about two hours in labor um, and probably about a hundred pound of machining. Uh, so, you know, that's, it's a 300 pound bill minimum, uh, you know, depending on where you go. So just think about this. I mean, I'd have done this. I've done this on and off now six times, uh, maybe, maybe seven. So that, you know, that's a big bill to pay if you're not doing it yourself. So just keep that in mind, guys. I might persuade one of you guys to go for the tubular manifolds. Uh, because you know, if you factor the initials 450 pounds, if you then factor in, uh, you know, cracks and warpages, you know, on and off, on and off with labor, etc., you're probably at the price of a, of a tubular manifold. So just bear that in mind, guys, something to think about. Obviously, I'm kind of lucky enough that I can take it off myself, but uh, it's still a pain in the ass, it's still time, and I have to still pay to get a machine. So just bear that in mind. 2,000 years later. It's been a few days. The manifold has been off to the machine shop to get skimmed and flattened. So I got it back. It actually took about a week to come back. So it's now just before Christmas. I've got some time off. So I'm going to fit the manifold and uh, get the car back up and running. Uh, it's pretty cold today. So uh, I want to get the job done quick. But I just want to show you exactly how much uh, sort of material we've lost due to the bow. This manifold has been skimmed twice now. Uh, and I'll just show you how much material has actually been taken off just to get it flat uh, the second time round. So here's the face of the manifold. This is the bit that needed to be uh, leveled and skimmed. So you can see it's got a lovely finish on there now. And I don't know if you can tell of how fat this end is here compared to it in the middle. So it was obviously bowing like a banana in the middle. So all they have to do is skim the middle away to match the edges. But I've got a caliper here. I'm just going to measure the corner. So if we measure, let's say that corner there, uh, that's in inches. How do I change it? There we go. That's 13 millimeters there. If we measure the middle, that's 9.7 millimeters there. So there's a four millimeter difference between here and here. So again, guys, don't buy these manifolds. They crack, they warp, they're just not worth it. This is the second time now it's been skimmed. Uh, 70 pounds each time it's been skimmed. Obviously the welding work that I've done on it um, and obviously purchasing the manifold. So that manifold would have now cost me uh, about 700 pounds now for that manifold so guys it's just not worth getting them i mean this might not be the last time uh this comes off so just don't bother with them i'm just scraping away the excess sealant from the head that i used it's high temperature copper sealant that i used to try and see whether i can get a nice seal between the gaskets and the exhaust manifold so just scraping it away and then i can fit the new manifold now it goes on some lovely brand new stainless steel studs that I got, I didn't quite get enough, but I'll explain that a little bit in the video. So I brought some new uh, studs and I had to use some old ones, so I didn't get enough in the kit, because some of these studs are actually bent. Um, I don't know if you can really see them on camera, but so yeah, some of them are bent. Luckily well, that one's bent. This one is bent in two different directions. I don't know if you can see that, so. 
Well, a new pack of studs, but didn't get enough, so I had to use some of the straight ones, the old ones. On with some brand new gaskets. Now the battle, try to get the manifold into place onto the studs and onto the turbos. It looks quite short here, but I clipped a lot of the content out as it was getting boring watching me wrestle with this. Just the last of the pain in the arse bits where I just now need to bolt the turbo manifold onto the head, which is a nightmare just because of access to get to all the nuts uh, underneath the manifold. The sort of situates between the turbo and the block. So just trying to get access to all those bolts is a nightmare but let's get them all clamped down, all evenly as well, just to make sure that uh, you know everything's clamped down square. We don't want any more bowing issues. So that's all I'm doing here, is I'm just trying to get those uh, 13 mil bolts all clamped down properly and, uh, and nice and tight. Once that's done, I can go ahead and I can bolt the turbo to the turbo manifold and then start getting the rest of the kit back onto the car, like the wastegate and the boost pipe, etc., and the exhaust. So it really is the home stretch now, guys. It's always the most annoying part, getting this manifold off and not getting it back on. And now we're into the home run. While I've been running away getting this manifold and this turbo back together, I just want to show you a website that I've come across that I think will help a lot of you guys out if you are ever working on these cars, whether it be GTI, uh, R32, any of the Volkswagen platform, uh, well, any platform really. It's absolutely brilliant. The manual is so comprehensive. It literally must be the manual that is given to VW Techs. It has everything from uh, you know DSG replacements, uh, servicing, uh, how to check for absolutely anything, even dimensions on things like wheels and torque specs, absolutely anything you can think of. It's 11,000 pages long and it gives you anything you need for this car and these platforms. So it may not help you with a turbo conversion, but it definitely will help you with everything else, especially with technical details with these cars. So. If you guys are interested, I have signed up with it as an affiliate with them. So guys, if you think this would be helpful and useful for you, head over, use my link below in the description, go and buy one of these e-manuals and you'll get 22% discount by using my code Octane at the checkout. Save yourself a bit of money as well and get your hands on one of these crucial manuals that will just save your life in a tight spot. Thanks for listening, guys. So it's all back together now and I'm just going to start it. I have started it while it was kind of apart just to check for leaks uh, in the exhaust system. But it's all back together now. Hopefully it starts nicely and there's no leaks that I obviously haven't found already. And uh, yeah, fingers crossed they will last me at least to over the winter and uh, into the new year. Which will then, we'll have other plans for the car by then so stay tuned for that. seem to feel any leaks which is good so they warm up I need to top up the coolant and then uh, fingers crossed we'll take a good blast and uh, hopefully that's that done guys this was the grease they used uh, to rebuild the dump valve with it's the same grease that they use from the factory so it's quite expensive and obviously you get a big tube you don't need the whole tube but you know it's always good to have some grease on hand so in the car now, just about to take it for a test drive. Fingers crossed it all works okay, and I get it to boost, and, and nothing you know pops off or you know runs out of boost or whatever. So I could do that now, and uh, fingers crossed it all works okay. Got no light, no lights on the dash at all, so all good there. Just need to take it for a drive now. Reading vacuum, so that's all good. So it's definitely driving a lot smoother. With the leaking exhaust before, it was uh, very hard to drive. 
um, and it was kind of like very all over the place so it seems much nicer to drive now and we'll just see what it's like getting into a bit of boost shall we seems a lot more eager to want to get into boost than it did before which is good to know we like that Still needs to warm up. Probably at about 80 degrees now. So guys all done uh, the car drives absolutely lovely I, I'm not getting as much boost as I used to get when I was when I had a dynode so when I had a dynode um, and then tuned it was pushing 1.1 bar um, now it's maybe peaking at a bar dropping down to 0.9 so I thought that because that was happening prior to the exhaust manifold I thought that was uh, the exhaust manifold leaking uh, that was causing the issue so um, I've just up the boost a few clicks as well on the boost controller and it hasn't improved so the boost didn't go up so I must have a leak somewhere so probably in the next episode I'll end up probably in a future episode we'll, we'll get the system pressure tested um, my mate James um, who's got the Evos he has a uh, pressure testing system so uh, we'll, we'll get all pressure tested and see what's going on there um, but yeah definitely not boosting as much it's still fast as, as you might see from the video but not as much boost as it was before so i must be missing out on some power there but oh, another job off the list um I'll probably have to do it again at some point but what the plan is essentially is to get me over the christmas and winter period and uh in the new year i'll look at a new setup um probably a tubular manifold setup so if you guys got any recommendations for a good one um probably more a top mounted um tubular manifold uh, I don't want to spend crazy money um, but you know I know there's some good ones out there for a reasonable price so if you guys know anyone or you know of any let me know uh, but that'd be the plan as for the car um, potentially do have some secret squirrel plans coming up uh, with regards to making more power so uh, definitely stay tuned guys and if you want to see that um, you like and subscribe that will really help me manage to sort of you know afford a bigger build um, and also um, bring attention to the people that can help as well so hit that like hit that subscribe it will help me out massively it helped me grow the channel it helped me build this car more powerfully and uh, which is a win-win for all. It's free, you know, so why wouldn't you? And you get to stay up to date with all my good content. So I'll see you in the next one. I know you told your friend you're not okay. And tell me what's wrong and why you never said you felt that way. And guess you're trying to stay strong and fake a smile until I...